Hey everybody, in today's backlog overview, we're going to be taking a look at all of these sets. We've got some icons, speed champions, Star Wars, Brickheads, and Disney. I think I have no other choice. I have to start with Disney. Check out Stitch. Comes with 730 pieces and retails for 65 US dollars. I love this little guy. He's so cute. Those big printed eyes too. Those are fantastic. His ears are on ball joints. You can actually pose them and change his mood, although he'll always be smiling with his cute little teeth there. He's holding some ice cream, and of course he's in like a Hawaiian shirt there, and I like his pose. He's just sitting. There's a whole bunch of cool parts and building, like these snot building techniques that were used to mount those parts. It's pretty neat. Also, the uh, stickers on the back. Oh no, stickers on odd shaped pieces. But I like how they made it like a Hawaiian shirt. So all of these flowers that you see there are all stickers. His head can also rotate. He's got the uh, flower on top of his head there too, which looks pretty sweet. And then the ice cream cone can actually be removed and come apart. So he's a happy guy because he's got his ice cream and that is Stitch. I think it's a pretty good value and a great addition to the displayable Disney collection. We recently got another stitch as well, which is the brickhead right here. It's a pretty cool brickhead, but it doesn't have any unique print pieces. But look how cute he is. That's fantastic. We also got two other brickheads. There is the iron spider. I love all the print pieces in the iron spider. Look at that. The face, that wicked cool print piece right there. The nice color combination as well. And then he's got like the, what do you want to call those? legs on the back? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what I'll call those. I guess I'm just drawing a blank on that. But that is a really cool Marvel Brickhead. I'm glad that they gave us Iron Spider. I just love the color combinations. And once again, that print detailing is fantastic. And then we also got Potted Groot as well. There are some print pieces there. You can see it's like the, the tree bark or the, the Groot bark, I guess I'll call it. But we got a little cute Potted Groot. Now I didn't build these right away because my brickhead display is looking pretty full. I'm a fan of the brickheads. I just love their price point and the print pieces that you get with them. My displays are just looking so good. But there is one that's uh, rather funny. It's actually the position of Captain America. I ran out of space, so I decided to put Captain America on top of Thanos. But yeah, as you can see, there's not much room for expansion here. The largest and most nostalgic set that we're going to be having a look at today is the Medieval Town Square. It retails for 230 US dollars and comes with 3,304 pieces. Check out the minifig lineup. We've got a Lion Knight, Wolf Pack, Tax Collector, Innkeeper, Tapestry Weaver, Carpenter, a Shield Painter, Peasant Boy, and then also a Dark Grey Goat. This build sort of starts off a little bit strangely in my opinion you build all of these little mini builds you've got like the wood chopping stand there there's like this little table the painted shield and the bear shield and then this cart which can be paired up with the tax collector and then this stand right here which is selling some cheese and other baked goods i guess those can be paired up with your minifigs displayed outside of the structure, or you could also place some of those little mini builds inside these two structures. You also get this tree right here, which has some stories on the trunk. There is a wanted poster and also a sale poster. So they are selling that dark gray goat. How dare they, hey? And on the other side, there's another sticker element that warns you about the dragon. Taking a look at the first structure, which is actually an inn, I like the decoration above the door and the color combination is fantastic. The dark brown, reddish brown, dark tan, olive green, and tan. Also nougat. There's just so many great colors that have been paired up there. It looks amazing. And then when you flip it around the backside here, we've got some light gray with some masonry, also dark gray, and then the red. It just adds like a nice pop of color. And I think the roof is absolutely fantastic. I just love those elements and they use so many of them in this build. There is a really cool tower right here which is done in the light gray color as well. It has some vegetation growing out the bottom of it. There's some arch pieces, some arrow slits there and I just think it looks really cool. Like just all the different combinations 
work really well with this first structure here. Like, look at that. We got the chimney with those really cool, like, rubberized pieces, and there's actually another one on this side. Also hidden inside this little tree right here is a blue bird on the base of that guard tower. And I love the fact that this is a closed back, but you have the ability to hinge it open so you can very easily check out all of the interior details, such as the little tavern right here. On this side is the shield painting workshop. Got all sorts of supplies and an anvil there. Above is a room. Across from that is a kitchen. Up here is another room. And then of course there's access to the tower. Everything feels very accessible. So if you want to pose some minifigures in there, it would be very easy to do so. And you can actually remove this top roof just to gain access to that bedroom. That is a solid build. Our next structure isn't quite as tall as the inn, but it's definitely wider and it's split into three different sections. Also, we have a yard right here where we can display our goat. I really like this back door. The color combination is great. We've got the dark tan roof with some nougat accents there. Also the reddish brown with the tan and then the white grill pieces in the uh, windows. And then the uh, light gray, taller structure in the center. And then over here we transition into dark green on the door with the white and black. And once again, I love this roof here. These elements are so cool. I need to order a bunch of those in different colors. Like the, the dark brown looks really good. Also, there's some dark tan mixed in there as well. I think that just looks great. So the exterior of this structure looks fantastic. And once again, this one does open up so you can reveal all of the interior details. And some of the roofs are removable as well. So this building can actually hinge open on both sides. So that will hinge 90 degrees. And then this structure will hinge 90 degrees as well. And that's going to reveal the interior details. For example, right here, we have a large tapestry that was just woven. Pretty cool floor tiling in there. And same with the cheese factory. Got some really nice tiles in there. And there's a little kitty cat in there as well. So fun little story. And then we can actually remove this roof which is actually a really cool build. You can see it actually uses the snot bricks. Get that nice design, which will blend up perfectly with these slopes here. And then there's all sorts of little interior details. There's even some in the roof. And then we can gain access to this build right here just by popping this roof off as well. And we can check out the interior details of the winch. So you can see they were lifting up a wagon wheel. There's some ladders there as well. And then some other miscellaneous items in those barrels. And we can lock the winch by turning this piece on the side. And then we can operate it up and down by spinning this gear. And then below that is where we have the carpenter's workshop. And there's also a door that services that and a little awning going over top of the back arch. And this is where we can take some of those mini builds that we built at the very beginning of this and place them within the structure just to add some more details, such as maybe this chair right here. Maybe she's building that. So it's cool how we have these little mini builds that can be placed throughout these two structures. But once again, check out those color combinations. They are awesome. Especially this one here, when you like spin it around, you can see the red, light, and dark gray. And this one you can actually display opened up to sort of change the look of it. Actually looks presentable as well. It doesn't make sense, but it looks presentable. This one here, not so much when you open this up. It's just like, no, that doesn't really make a whole lot of sense, I don't think. Overall, I think this is a fantastic set that's actually offered at a reasonable price. It's very nostalgic. You get some pretty cool mini figures along with that dark gray goat. The mini builds are sort of random, but once again, they can be placed throughout these builds or within some sort of medieval diorama. With all of that said about the medieval town square, I still think it's missing something, and that is a piece of livestock, maybe like an ox or a horse. But I guess LEGO did sort of compensate by releasing these cars which have a lot of horsepower. They released four Speed Champion sets. The three on the left here retail for $27, and then there's the BMW 2-pack, which retails for $45, and each vehicle comes with its own minifig. Starting with the Dark Horse, it has a really nice color combination, the dark blue, dark gray, and also black. I love the part usage to create the hood right there. Some awesome building techniques used with those brackets. 
and also the front end looks pretty good along with the curved slopes on the door and also when you swoop around back you can see some more slopes and this like interesting angle for those tail lights now there's a few stickers on this one but not as many as you would expect for a speed champion set usually these things are plastered with stickers and some of the other ones that we'll have a look at today definitely are but look at all of the angles and everything with those curved slopes it's pretty cool and I actually really like this torso on the minifig comes with some pretty cool print detailing on the back side and overall this is just like a great looking vehicle i like the fact that it's not like as racy as some of the other ones it's more so looking like a street legal car which is pretty neat when you have a look at the other ones they're all more so designed for racetracks of course you could take the dark horse on a racetrack as well but it just looks a little more streety you know like i'd want that in my lego city some of these other ones yeah they wouldn't really belong in the lego city however with that said i do think the speed champions are a little bit off scale for the lego city they've just gotten so large as of late like within the last couple of years they've expanded them to eight wides so you can see they're on like the wider chassis so they don't really belong in a lego city just because they're so large now but they are fantastic display pieces next up we have the audi s1 e-tron quattro the minifig comes in a race suit all the minifigs come with their race helmets and also hair pieces and then each set comes with a wrench as well this thing looks like it's plastered and stickered but it's actually not the case actually it somewhat is i guess <laughs> the uh rims here are prints though and same with this hood piece right there that beautiful print piece with the audi logo and this cheese slope is also printed along with uh, the windscreen as well but all the other details that you see are stickers so there's quite a few of them on this set but once again it's something that you just expect with speed champions lots of great part usage here again like we've got lots of snot building techniques also curved slopes all over the place i love this uh, modified one by one snot brick right there on either side for the rear view mirrors but like look at this slope right here there's three stickers just on that the spoiler looks good it's got a two by four e-tron logo and there's brackets on either side of that and the curved slopes that just make it look pretty sharp that's for sure then we have the uh, audi logo on the back side there as well and the rear diffuser pretty sweet you can open this thing up of course to have a look inside there's not much in there i mean you can position your minifig these seats don't really look like much we've got some pieces that are mounted on some snot bricks there and then there is uh, like a shifter there also a steering wheel and then a little bit of a dash as well and then you can see some engine detail just in front of the spoiler there this is a 2023 mclaren formula one car pretty cool that we're getting the f1 car in the speed champions lineup this year look at this print piece on the front with all the advertisements dell hilton and much more also the uh chrome stickers all over this then we got some dewalt on the side there it's pretty cool they've got the different advertisements on the car which of course makes it authentic and the tires are printed which is nice and they got those hubcaps which are printed as well the driver can fit in there he comes with a uh, printed helmet and of course he's in the mclaren race suit check out the steering wheel within it's actually a gaming controller with some specialty print details that looks pretty sweet i also like the use of the spoons for the rear view mirrors the flex tubing just behind the seat there and then some more advertisements on the vehicle back there it's created using sticker elements and then the rear side of it yeah that looks pretty cool i also like the part usage up front here as well with the bucket handles pretty sweet and then of course we have the uh, driver identified right there with using that sticker element as well so pretty nice looking f1 car in the speed champions lineup here in 2024 there we go i think it's required to pop the driver in that one before we move on to the bmw two pack the bmw sticker mobiles everybody oh my gosh it's crazy how many stickers are used in this set holy cow but on the right side here we have the bmw m4 gt3 and then on the left side we have the bmw m hybrid v8 you get two minifigs one in blue it has a black leg the 
uh, print detail on the torso there and one in red with once again a black leg and the print detail on the torso but look at all the stickers on this thing it's just something that you have to embrace if you're willing to collect speed champion cars there's just no way that they would print all of this if they were to print it all it would become very very expensive and also if they were to print these they'd be specialized for these specific sets it's not like they would reuse a lot of these print elements in different sets so that's something they have to factor in when they are deciding to create a new element and that's why there are a lot of stickers on these and once again you can actually like not apply the stickers if you don't want these uh, sets to be plastered with stickers well then that's up to you you can just keep your sticker sheet intact and leave them bare because they actually still look good without the sticker details something that i really like about this one is actually the interior so there's a little bit more of an interior in there. You've got like the calculator element, also another one of those uh, printed control panels or steering wheels. And yeah, there's just a little bit more detail there. You see that? That looks pretty sweet. A little bit above and beyond some of the other interior details that we're having a look at today in the Speed Champion sets. This one here, it just has a seat and that control panel. There's not really much more to fit in there. Like there's not a whole lot of studs on either side, but there are some jumpers there as well on either side of the seat in general they're sort of what you would expect from speed champions once again we've got some interesting building techniques and all that they are plastered in stickers but i do like the fact that this one here has those interior details i think that is pretty neat i would have liked to maybe seen a printed windscreen for this one i don't like putting stickers on the windscreen but beyond that i, I think they they look good and once again the price point for these is actually more reasonable you get two of them for $45 compared to one for $27 so not too bad at all and we're getting uh, BMW Speed Champions I believe this is a first so that's pretty cool there we go that's all four Speed Champion sets that came out here in March of 2024 we've got one more car that we're gonna be checking out today and that is the McLaren MP44 and Ayrton Senna. This is like a tribute set to the Brazilian F1 car driver and also the car itself. Uh, so the Ayrton Senna minifig can be presented on this podium-like stand and he's got some pretty awesome details there such as the print detailing on his torso and legs and also on the helmet and then there is this six by six sticker element with his quote. No matter what your dream is you have to dedicate yourself entirely to it so it's pretty cool that this set comes with this that is just nice also i think the scale of this set is pretty sweet it's 693 pieces however it is fairly expensive 80 us dollars i love the fact that it comes with a specification sticker there as well so you can see the specifications of this car and that is presented on the stand which just presents this at a really nice angle if this was sitting flat on a shelf i don't think it would look nearly as good there's some technic elements on the base of that stand and they just present this so nicely right that's awesome okay the uh, steering wheel is actually connected to the tires which is nice for a smaller set with 693 pieces that is a nice feature to have and then of course there are some brands and logos all over this thing however it is missing the main one this of course was the marlboro cigarettes car but lego is not going to put that on one of their Lego sets. We do have a nice print piece up front here, Honda 12 Shell McLaren, and then the uh, Shell elements there as well. There is the Shell logo on the side, and then the Shell name, and then there is the Tag Heurer, the uh, watch brand, right? That has uh, their logo on the transparent element there. The cockpit is pretty well detailed with the steering wheel and the curved slopes to create the actual seat within. Love the shape of everything here. I think they nailed that. There are some studs that are exposed, which is actually nice. Uh, there wasn't a whole lot of studs on those uh, Speed Champion cars. Did you notice that? I also really like these A-frame pieces that are supporting the tires. They connect to a ball joint uh, or ball joints that are connected to the tires. The tires are all one piece, so the rim and tire all one piece which is pretty nice we've got the spoiler back here with the connecting element right there from mclaren uh, some nice color combinations which is the cigarette color uh, red and white and there is some nice print throughout the vehicle as well i think this is a great scale like it's smaller than your classic lego creator expert cars 
693 pieces, $80 though. It is fairly expensive. Obviously, there's a lot of branding that uh, is going into this. And I think a lot of F1 car or F1 race fans are going to be all over getting the set. Even if they're not a fan of Lego, I think this is going to attract a new market. So I think they've really done a great job of marketing this set. And Brazilians are going to be super happy with this figure and this car in general. I'm very curious to see if anybody actually prints the Marlboro stickers so you can make it look like the actual vehicle. That would be rather interesting to see, that's for sure. So there we go, we have the McLaren MP4 4 with Ayrton Senna. Now I actually already reviewed these two LEGO Star Wars mid-scale ships. We got the Millennium Falcon and also the Tana 4. These are great. I love the scale of them, the displayability of them. I think they're just fantastic. Like we've got uh, the frigate and also the executor, and now we have the Millennium Falcon and the Tanov. This one retails for $85. This one retails for $80. The Millennium Falcon comes with more pieces. Both of them come with uh, print elements, though. We've got the 4x4 modified plate there with the Millennium Falcon and also the panel for the 25th anniversary, 25th anniversary of LEGO Star Wars. The Millennium Falcon comes loaded with additional print pieces. Everything that you see here is print, which is just money if you ask me. Like, I love the fact that they did that. When I originally looked at the images, I was like, oh, are those all stickers? And no, that was not the case. Even these elements, you've seen those with stickers before but those are printed and then the cockpit is printed as well so that is stellar i love the stands that they sit on too like this is just like such a sweet angle and then of course we've got the hose in the black there to represent the thrusters of the millennium falcon there's not any details like that can be revealed by like taking these panels off but there actually is some interior details that's represented by studs and i forgot to mention this when I reviewed these at the studio, they're actually the first sets that I ever built at the new studio, but you've got R2-D2 in there, C-3PO, and also Chewbacca, and then you have the little uh, table game that they play as well. So that's pretty cool. It's just represented by some studs. And we've got the same thing going on inside the Tantive as well. So we've got Leia, R2-D2, and C-3PO. So it's pretty cool. There's the write-up in there, just sort of what's going on and... Uh, representing that scene of course you all know that scene right yeah they're about to head down to uh, Tatooine there and uh, meet up with uh, Luke Skywalker uh, but yeah we've got some sticker elements on the back of the tan of there those aren't print um, I, I get it though because once again it's all about being able to reuse these print pieces they can reuse that they can reuse that in a different model and this is still pretty cool I don't know if they could reuse that, but I'm glad that they went all print with the Millennium Falcon. Maybe it would have been nice to do that with the Tanov as well, uh, especially considering the fact it's uh, $80 with 654 pieces, and this one has 921 pieces with all print, and it's only five more dollars. So I think this one is a much better value. So maybe they should have done all print for the Tanov as well. But they're going to sell a lot more Millennium Falcons than they will Tanovs, I think, personally. Uh, then we have some nice thrusters on the back here as well. All 11 of them, and this one here can be displayed in either direction. You can spin it. Same with this one here, but I think this is the, the better direction for it. Uh, it's just held in place by some uh, modified plates with the upright Technic pin. And then this one here is actually held in place by a bracket on that uh, beam or post that goes into the bottom of the ship. I think these are great. I can't wait to get more mid-scale Star Wars ships. I got one more 25th anniversary LEGO Star Wars set, and that is the boarding of the Tan of Four. This set retails for $55 US dollars. It only comes with 502 pieces, but it has seven minifigures. Holy cow, we got uh, Darth Vader with the arm print detailing, two stormtroopers, Captain Antilles, you can set up that iconic force choke scene, and then we have two rebel fleet troopers as well and then best of all we've got the 25th anniversary lego star wars arc trooper fives which is exclusive to this set look at all the print detailing on the torso legs and also side of arms he's got some accessories on the back there the fabric just below his head and then the uh, two blasters and when i remove his helmet you can see that his face has some pretty cool print detailing as well 
And then, of course, he sits on the modified 4x6 plate with the 25th anniversary LEGO Star Wars logo. So you get all those minifigures and also a pretty cool hallway build of the TANF. Like, check out some of these moving features. The door, which is currently open, can be closed. And I like the fact that there's some nice details there with the trans red and orange elements, such as the cheese slopes. There's actually two ways to open and close this door. You can use this Technic element, which is right there, or you can also come back here and use that Technic element as well, because they are connected using some long axle pieces. There's also one other cool play feature. You can make all of these guys sort of fall over and meet their demise. Uh, you can just tip that Technic piece like that and send these guys flying if you've got them set up right. You there, fall over for me. There, he doesn't want to go down. There we go. And then we have Captain Antilles right there. We can set up the force choke scene once again. Vader is standing on one of those. I mean, he would never fall like this, but let's make him do it anyway. And then we have uh, a Stormy as well, which can fall over. So it's a pretty cool little play feature in the hallway. I also like all of these elements that are used to create the texture on the back wall, such as the ingot pieces and the inverted arches on the bottom. And then we have some sticker details as well. It'd be really cool to uh, build a supersized hallway or maybe even more of the tan of using more of these sets. Of course, you could complete this hallway, which would be pretty easy to do using two or three or four sets, whatever, however many you want to use. But what would be actually really neat would be to expand this tan of and make it a diorama. Maybe you could make like another area over here and you can set up the R2D2, C3PO, and Princess Leia scene. That would be a really cool diorama. Overall, I like this set, 55 US dollars. Yes, it's pretty expensive, but look at that. You get seven figures, and a lot of them have uh, alternate face print detailing. So on the back side, they've got uh, more print detailing. And then of course, you've got this epic one right here of ARC Trooper Fives. Boy, I've made a mess here. Last but definitely not least, we have the Snow White and the Seven Dwarves Cottage. This set here comes with 2,220 eight pieces it retails for 220 us dollars and it comes with 10 minifigures we've got snow white the prince all seven dwarves and then of course the evil queen in disguise with her poisonous apple somebody did mention the fact that maybe the dwarves should have came with dual molded posable short legs instead of the fixed ones with the single color that might have been a pretty cool idea, but I'm not complaining about the fact that we got 10 minifigs in this set. In addition to the minifigs, we also get all of these critters. So there's two squirrels, a rabbit, a bluebird up there, and then a couple more birds hanging out on the well over there. But a pretty cool minifig lineup. Like, that is awesome. They couldn't have done it any other way. In addition to all of those minifigures, critters, and this beautiful cottage, we also got two mini builds. There's this well right here which is covered with beautiful flowers and then we have snow white's glass coffin which i think was an essential detail and it was really well done i love this print piece there's actually one on either side it sort of has like that gold foil feel to it and then there's some beautiful uh, greenery behind it as well such as the spruce tree which is built with those fern elements and these elements which look super nice yeah i really like this mini build. I'm, I'm glad that they decided to include this because of course this is iconic to the story of Snow White. And then we have the beautiful cottage from the front side. It looks gorgeous. We've got some trees on either side of it. So some nice greenery and also there's some nice greenery growing out of the cottage or sort of going over top of the doorway which is nicely detailed there. The color combinations are fantastic. We have the tan nougat dark orange and bright light orange for the roof i believe that's the color if my memory is working right there the bright light orange roof and then there's some nice print details as well such as the owls and i really like these um, shutters as well with the hearts on them yeah so just a great looking building from the front side like it looks fantastic like look at the roof here so many different like curved slopes went into it also the one by one modified plates with the forward facing tooth and the uh, one by two plates as well and then you just got some leaves on there and that olive color to break it up a bit and also some dark orange sort of popping through so that roof is pretty sweet there's a lot of similar pieces that went into the construction of the roof and there's actually a funny note in the instruction manual and i'll share that with you in one moment coming along the side here there is a little spot where you can position dock 
rock and he can be examining some of the gems that they found in the mine. I like the texture on the bottom there of the light and dark gray on like the foundation of the cottage and then there's some more boards at those cool angles and some more greenery creeping up the side there and the nice window. And we can also remove this roof panel to reveal some interior details and the whole building can actually split right here. There's one connection point right there and the point of it splitting is just so that you can gain access and pose your minifigures inside the cottage. It's not for display reasons. On this side, we've got this really nice tree here and another one growing out of the side of the chimney and that's actually right below the activation point for the light brick. We've got some nice slopes on the base of that and of course the color of the chimney is light and dark gray. I can push on that light brick and that's going to activate the light brick which is, of course is within the um, fireplace there. The fireplace is nicely detailed. Uh, right beside it there, there is the broom mounted to the wall and a candle on top along with some spoons mounted just above it and then there's the uh, table right here which can seat all of the uh, seven dwarves and they've got some really cute chairs there with the nougat heart pieces and ingot tiles and on top of the table is some cups the bowls and the large baguettes as well this is the uh, front door you can see some details on either side of it such as the clock the mug and that barrel there above in the uh, attic we actually have a chest right here which is full of gems and a barrel right beside that along with a crate and then down here there is the organ with these squirrel sticker elements and then just some more details. See what I mean though? It's a little bit hard to access these details, so I'm happy that the building does split open so you can get in there and actually position your minifigs correctly and just reposition some of the details if you so choose. Now some of the best details, of course, are the beds. The beds are uh, iconic to the seven dwarves and you can access that by removing this roof panel right here. Woohoo! Just don't do it like I did it because it does break, I guess. <laughs> and there's the uh, seven beds within cute little beds there and then there are some details in the uh, roof space above that. Now I can't lie to you when I originally saw this set and I revealed it here on my channel I was pretty fired up about the fact that this is an open back. I was not happy about it at all but now that I actually have it on hand I realize that the front of it just looks so good and it sort of looks enclosed from this perspective so as long as you display it right on your shelf or position it right within your enchanted forest or in your your lego city or whatever it may be you're going to be okay with it being an open back because you can't really tell because it's so deep when you look at it from an angle you still can't tell that it's an open back from that side and even from this side you still can't tell that it's an open back because it has so much depth and I couldn't really understand the point of it opening like it does when I was looking at the pictures. But now I understand it's just to get in there and display it. It's not for, or to pose minifigures. It's not for display purposes whatsoever. I'm okay with it having an open back now. They gave us some pretty sweet minifigs in this set. It does look really good. And I got to share that funny image with you. As I mentioned, when building the roof, there's a lot of similar pieces. So in the instruction manual, you can see there's all the pieces that aren't sorted and that makes you grumpy. But then over here, you can see Dopey is looking pretty happy because he has his pieces sorted by part type, making it easier to construct the roof. One thing that I really like about the minifigs I forgot to mention is the fact that they actually have alternate faces as well. And of course they come with accessories such as the pickaxes, shovel, and more. So yeah, there we go everybody. It is the Snow White and the Seven Dwarves Cottage. I hope you enjoyed my overview of all of these sets. I've got to say I am pretty happy with all of them. Yeah, like it, it's just a great lineup. Like March 2024 was a sweet month for Lego releases. There's a lot of good ones and I didn't even get all the good ones in my opinion. I left some on the shelves there. Got to save some for the future. And also, I don't really have a place to display all these right now just because my Lego room is sort of in shambles as we're working on constructing the new studio. I apologize for not getting these reviews out in a timely fashion. Just a little bit busy with some other stuff right now. And I hope moving forward on release day, I can get back to live streaming or providing these reviews in a more timely fashion. Let me know what you think of all these sets by commenting below. Please remember to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for some more great stuff coming out in the very near future. And have yourselves a fantastic day. Bye for now.